Hi everyone, my name is Pablo and I'm a full stack software developer. I got my first tech job at 39, completely self-taught without a college degree. In 2019, I was a salsa teacher with zero programming experience and learning how to code had never crossed my mind. Two years later, I was working for a big company, earning twice as much as I've ever had before. And one year after that, I was working from home. So if I can, I believe anyone can. And this is the stuff that I wish I knew when I started. The first thing we need to decide is what are we going to learn, front end or back end? And I believe you should learn both. And the reason is very simple. It will be much harder to get a job if you only have back end or front end knowledge. It's a very competitive market out there and you want to stack the deck in your favor, becoming a full stack developer and that will give you many more options when you start applying for jobs. That doesn't mean if you just learn front end or back end, you can't get a job. It will just be harder. Something else to consider is what you like. If you love creating beautiful designs and a great user experience, by all means, learn front end. And if you are more inclined to processing and analyzing data, focus in the back end. But I do believe that learning both will pay off. If you do decide to learn both, which one do you learn first? You can choose either, but in my opinion, you should start with the back end. The reason is the front end market is very saturated and most jobs have hundreds of applicants. So if you start with the back end, you might be able to get a job earlier purely because there is less competition for these jobs. What I definitely don't recommend is that you try to learn both at the same time. That's not impossible, but most people I have seen trying that end up giving up because it's very easy to get overwhelmed when trying to learn it at the same time. There are many back-end languages out there, so let's think of some criteria to make that decision. First one is pick any of the most used languages, but don't overthink it. There is a lot of debate online about which language is better, which sometimes can be paralyzing. So what you want to do is pick a language and start as soon as possible. Once you learn the basics of a language, it won't be very hard to pivot to another language in case you have a good reason for that. The second criteria, if you have an industry that you want to work for, some languages such as C++, Java and C Sharp are multi-purpose, but some industries use some of their languages more than others. If you want to create video games, you might have a look at C Sharp or C++. If you want to work with embedded software, which is software attached to devices and equipment, you should probably go for Java or C++. If you want to go into the corporate world, most companies use Java or C Sharp. For data science, Python would be a good choice. So make sure you look into what languages are used in the industries that you are most interested in. Another criteria you can't ignore is which language is most prevalent in your area. It's very unlikely your first job will be remote. So if you are not willing to relocate, you need to pick a language that has a high demand in your area. But the good thing is that you can quickly find that out by searching online. Just use some of the biggest job search engines and you can see what's needed in your city or state. And last but not least, there's something else that's a little bit underrated. If you can get some form of informal mentorship, which means getting help from someone that has experience in that language, you might want to have a good think about it. In my first few months, I was learning Java, but I had a good friend that was a senior C Sharp developer and he helped me so much when I got stuck that I'm not sure I would have succeeded without his help. Chris, if you're listening to this, thank you so much again. You are the best. Now, if you're thinking of front end, you have to think of JavaScript. That's by miles the most used language in front end development. It was designed to work in browsers to enable dynamic content and interactivity. And in any front end job, you will need JavaScript, either what we call vanilla or pure JavaScript or front end frameworks based on JavaScript, such as React and Angular. And these days you can become a full stack developer with just JavaScript. There's this thing called Node.js, which allows developers to run JavaScript code on the server side. You should definitely be creating projects when learning how to program. One of the most common mistakes I see amongst beginners is spending a lot of time talking about code, reading articles, watching tutorials, and completing online courses without creating projects. We are training to be engineers, and engineers build stuff. You can read entire programming books, complete thousands of coding challenges, and even delve into advanced concepts in programming, but you can only fully understand how these things work in the context of a project. 
where all of these pieces are working together and not in isolation. I compare this to reading everything about building a house or about how to cook without actually doing those things. You cannot say that you know how to build or how to cook if you haven't practiced a lot. A few considerations when building projects. First, get rid of the idea that you have to create something new and amazing. Start small, create a simple to-do list, watch a simple tutorial about some employee management system or a simple e-commerce or point of sale and tweak it to add some more functionality. These are common applications that you're going to be building in an enterprise environment. Many beginners are paralyzed thinking they need to come up with the next million dollar idea. Interesting ideas will come up as you build simple stuff. And even when you're building something that everyone has built before, you can always give it your personal touch and you'll be gaining fluency in that language. If you look into the lives of brilliant people like Da Vinci or Edison, they spent many years perfecting their craft before coming up with their masterpieces. And above all, when you start applying for jobs, you need to demonstrate that you are fluent in these languages and that's only possible showcasing your projects. There is a lot of debate about if you should have a portfolio or not. And while you can still get a job without one, in my opinion, you should have one. And I would go as far as recommending that you create a portfolio even before starting your projects. That will be a project in itself, creating a very simple static website. And having an empty portfolio is a powerful incentive for you to start building because you want to feel it, you want to impress people. Also, when you create your projects, you are likely to do a better job to have more attention to detail, knowing that it will be a portfolio piece. It's gonna be out in the world for people to see. And of course, a portfolio also has the potential to impress prospective employers. A beautiful portfolio is something extra in your toolbox to get the attention of hiring managers. It's part of your brand. Remember, you want to stack the deck in your favor. There are many examples out there to inspire you, and even if you're learning backhand and you only have console applications, you can still have a portfolio with links to your GitHub repositories. I've seen many cases of beginners that only had very simple projects in their portfolio and got jobs or at least interviews. My portfolio is still live, even though I'm not updating it anymore, but I started it with just two WordPress websites and eventually grew it to the point where it got the attention of a hiring manager and I landed my first job. And finally, start applying for jobs. When I was learning, I didn't trust I could get a job so early, so I only started applying after a year and a half of learning. And in hindsight, I think that was a mistake. I could have started within six months of learning. And that's for two reasons. First, even if I don't get a job that early, I might get interviews. And you can learn a lot from interviews and it's very motivating to even get into that process. That's gonna give you more energy to keep going. You might even get extremely lucky. Even though that's not so common anymore, there are many cases out there of self-taught developers that got a job within four or six months of learning and they only achieved that because they tried. And the second is you have nothing to lose. So find a nice resume template, make sure it looks professional, get feedback in communities like Reddit where people will be very honest about your resume and start applying for all entry level and junior positions in your area. And I suggest you keep track of your applications so you have some metric with which to assess your journey. And the most important thing you have to expect, you have to know that you're going to be rejected many, many times. You're going to be ignored and might start doubting yourself. Do not let that happen. It's absolutely normal to get rejected. Try instead to make each rejection as fuel for your journey. If you are serious about this, your mindset has to be, you're gonna do whatever it takes to get there and you're not gonna let a few rejections phase you. Now, except for learning back end and front end together, these steps are not consecutive. You're gonna be working all of those at the same time, learning the languages, creating projects, perfecting your portfolio and your resume and applying for jobs. And I guarantee that if you follow these steps and create a nice learning routine, trying to code at least a little bit every day, you have a very good chance of getting your first developer job. Thanks for watching and I'd love to hear your experiences in your programming journey. Use the comments below to ask questions, give me feedback or even let me know if you don't agree with something that I said here. Good coding and good luck.